Hi guys, this is 3D Printing 101, and we're in Fusion 360 today for a video on how to make 3D printable cookie cutters. If, like me, you eat cookies or biscuits on a regular basis, you'll find these cutters really fun to make and use. But let's be honest, who wouldn't want their own customised cookie cutters? I'm not expecting this video to be massively long, but since the last few tutorials I've done have been pretty serious, I figured we'd tone it down a bit and make some fun things. I mean, it also may or may not be because I'm a bit hungry at the moment, but enough rambling on, let's get started. Also, just before we get started, a very important note. Make sure the filament you're using is food safe. No one wants poisonous biscuits. So technically, we're not actually starting a Fusion 360, because the first thing you'll want to do is find an image of what you want to create. For instance, I'm going to be using this dog, but you can use whatever you want so long as it's not too complex. I mean, go complex if you want, but remember, it's a biscuit. Just save the image, insert it into Fusion 360, select the axes, preferably the flat one, and wham, your image has appeared in Fusion. Make sure your settings are the same as mine, then you're free to click OK. Now, all might seem well at the moment, to make sure the cookie cutter isn't stupidly big or small. To do this, go into Top View to make things easier, right click on your image, and click Calibrate. In calibration, you pick a length within your model and state how long that measurement is. Fusion will then rescale your image to fit the measurement you've just inserted. I'll calibrate my image now. Simply click on the top and bottom of your image and type in a sensible length. Mine's actually pretty much already there. I was going to set it to 100mm so it'd be a decent size when I print it. We'll just round that down. The next step in this cutter making process is to make an outline of the image. To do this, create a sketch on the same plane you inserted the image. In a situation like this, I'd often use the line tool to trace around the object, but since this shape is quite rounded, I'm going to use this spline tool. I'm going to use this tool as it can create curves easily, and you can quickly fiddle with them later if you need to. Before we get to using splines, however, I've got a surprise for the people going for symmetrical designs. If you go to the standard line tool and draw a line down the middle, you can use this as a mirror line so that you only have to make one side of the picture. You can then just flip it across. Sadly, if your picture is not symmetrical, you can't do this. You're going to have to go all the way around. Right then, since this step might take a while, I'm, I'm going to do the channel's first time lapse. But don't worry, I'll explain throughout what I'm doing. So basically, all you need to do is click at the highest point of your line and then start creating an outline of your image with the spline tool. Just keep clicking and it'll draw the lines for you. And so long as you go the right way, unlike what I did there, you should be fine. You will see me often playing with those scary green lines that appear on the curves when you click on the dot. But all I do is just change the shape of the curve. When the dots are wider apart, it'll make your curve more smooth. And when they're closer together, the curve will be sharper. You can also rearrange the dots that make up the curve by just clicking and dragging. Great, so if you've got a symmetrical design, you've got one half of the outline done. If you're asymmetrical, you should have the full outline done by now. Hopefully if you are symmetrical, you haven't clicked finish sketch yet. If you have, just right click on your sketch over here and click edit. Asymmetrical people can ignore this, but the next step is just to mirror your design over to the other side. To use this, we'll use the mirror tool. So you just have to define what objects you want to mirror and the line you choose to mirror around. You want this middle line as the mirror line, and everything else here is what wants to be mirrored. Click OK, and the design will be mirrored to the other side. Now you can finish your sketch, and it might make things easier for you if you delete the image. Now all we have left is our shape, but we're not done yet. This is just the 2D construct of what our shape's going to look like. To make it into a physical cookie cutter that we can use, we need to extrude it into 3D space. We'll do this, and we'll start off with the blade of the cookie cutter. Edit the sketch you just made, and go to the modifier panel and select the offset tool. Click on the curve that goes around the edge of your design, then you can choose what thickness you want the blade to be. I'd recommend a setting of about 2mm for effective cookie cutting. Finish the sketch, and click on the outside area you just created using the offset tool. Hit the E key, and extrude to the height you want. Click OK. 
and you've now got the blade of your cookie cutter. Now if you want this can be a complete design. If you want to make it fancy and add a handle I'll show you how to do that. Create a new sketch but on top of the area you've just extruded. Can you guess what we're doing now? We're just going to do another offset on the outside of the shape. Give it about a centimetre. Hit finish sketch and select both faces. Hit extrude and pick a size you think is sensible. You've now got a finished cookie cutter. The next part of the process is slicing, but don't get too worried. See, since this model's pretty simple, all you need to do is check that the scaling's correct, and you've got it turned in a way that's printable. This model in its current state isn't printable, because you need to turn it upside down so there's no overhangs. You could print it like that, but you need supports, and that's just wasteful when you can turn it upside down. I've also noticed if you look down here that my model's suspiciously long. If you remember, I only set it to 100mm, so that's definitely not right. Change this 120 value to 100, and then I think we're good to go. Just check you've got the default profile settings, and you can hit print, and once that's done, you can go make some cookies. Guess what? It's time for a cookie making montage. <laughs> So there you have it guys, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed that little montage there, it took way too much editing. So if you enjoyed, like the video and subscribe to the channel so we can help more and more 3D printing beginners. And as always, message me with any questions or video ideas, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!